You've landed on the science of fishing, where passion meets precision. Before we dive in, we would like to thank Bloody Battery, Sea Mule, and Black Reef Co. for sponsoring this episode. What's going on, everybody? Mark here with another episode of The Science of Fishing. Today, we're joined all the way from down under, as they say, from Australia with Dean Jackson. How are you, Dean? Good, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Over here in sunny South Florida. It's the evening time over here. It's early for you, right? Yeah, it's like 7 a.m. in the morning here. It's... um. Yeah, beautiful day here on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. There you go. So tell me what you've been up to, right? TFI is coming up. What's been happening? You know, tell me about SCF and what's been happening. Yeah, well, TFI, TFI is the um, Top Water Film Invitational, sponsored by BCF over here in Australia. We've um, got 10 of the highest profile fishermen and content creators sort of in the country who have been out, out filming the best 20 minute film they possibly can over the last couple of weeks and months. And um, they've actually submitted those films to us already. And we've had a little gold class premiere screening the other, not last week, the week before to um, suss them all out and see what we're in for. And then, yeah, they've all been uploaded to our, to our TFI platform now and are, are viewable for anyone ev everywhere in the world. And yeah, I guess, um, it's up to the public to vote for which film they think's the best. And um, yeah, we've got some heavy hitters in there and some top notch films. So yeah, it's, it's war for the teams at the moment. So there's heaps going on over here. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So I watch a bunch of YouTubers down from, uh, from Australia, you know, YBS, a bunch of those guys. Can we, who can we expect to see in this invitation? Um, so this, we're in the third year of, of the um, event um, we've already had some of the some world-class fishermen in there and creators in there first year was won by like um, Johnny Brooks fishing and um, Pelagic Bashoot. those boys took it out um, there was heat there's the back to basics boys in there there's Andy's fishing there's a heap of sort of really well-known Aussies that went head to head that year and um, same thing last year we had we actually had some rookie guys take it out last year from Yapoon in Queensland, they were um, the underdogs. They got a wild card entry in there and they took it out, but they were in there with some incredibly talented anglers and yeah, creators as well. Um, and then this year, this year, a couple of key people we've got in there. We've got our boy, Carl Jacobson, who's over there fishing the Bassmaster Classic in that he's, he submitted a film. We've got, um, we've got the all girls team from last year. They're back for redemption. They're, um, been fishing the um, Northern Territory. There's some wild stuff going on there, including pub crawls as well as fishing and margaritas and all sorts of stuff like that. And yeah, there's 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 a lot of different films. We've got our bloody, we've got like our reptiles man Ricky Max in there. He um he travelled from one side of Australia to the other side of Australia, catching road catching stuff on the road, all sorts of stuff to get to his fishing destination and. Yeah, it's like one of the best like Aussie Outback films you'll see. So there's some really good stuff on there. That's awesome, man. I mean, so you got the best of the best all together to be able to create this film competition, this film invitational, and it's taken off on a life of its own at this point. So what do you think has led to this? You know, tell me a little bit about the inspiration for starting this and where it came from. Yeah, good question. Um I guess, I guess us, our company, we just started off as like a little fishing events media company called SCF Australia, stands for Sustainable Fishing, Clean Waterways and Future Generations. And it was just like a little passion project back at the time. And we started running some cool little community events just here and like where we live on the Sunshine Coast. And we did some really, we tried out some online versions of our event here throughout the COVID period and stuff like that. And we started getting some really good traction and really good support and we, um, we throw a really good event. It's all citizen science based. We, um, everyone submits their fish into our app. We know whether they're releasing them, keeping them. Um, we encourage them to submit every single fish they catch. So we're like, we're getting an understanding of each, each area we have these events in. So on the sunshine coast here, where I live, we've actually got the best understanding of our fishery than anywhere else in the country because of these events. And, we're doing them in a couple of different locations now and we've done some really cool science-based stuff which is where this all sort of stemmed from and we figured we're making a really good impact just here 
here on the sunny coast and we figured, you know what, we could make an impact across Australia and across the world. So that's how we sort of come up with getting these high profile people in there, um, engaging the sponsors and utilizing a lot of things we'd learned over the years to sort of leverage what we had to, to pull this thing together. And, um, one of the big things for us is we've actually on the back end of the films, we've got like these, I guess they're guidelines or internal bonus points or whatever for the team. So they can, um, just to make sure they're doing the right thing out there. Like they're fishing responsibly. Um, I don't know what else there's, there's points for just like, um, talking about mangroves and fish habitat restoration and all sorts of stuff like that within their films that no one else really knows about. So that's all coming out in the films, the films that they're, they're, they're teaching the right messages. And I guess that's where it all come from. It was just about making that impact. And yeah, we raised, I don't know, nearly $25,000 for fish habitat restoration and um, donated some money to like the Sharks and Rays Foundation, Great Barrier Reef Foundation and, and stuff like that. So there's lots, of, there's lots of cool stuff happening as well. That's incredible. You guys are making, you know, a great impact that way. Um, in Australia, the fishing culture is way different than here in the U S I'd like to think, um, over there, you guys are very, very conservation heavy, not to say that we're not conservation heavy here in the United States, but in Australia, I feel like everybody is all on board and it's not people fighting each other over what fish should be kept, what fish should be released over there is a very, you guys are very cohesive together. So what do you think contributes to that? I mean, you guys have one of the most, if not the most beautiful reef structure in the world and one of the most incredible fisheries in the world. So what do you think that sustainably sustainability really stems from amongst your culture in Australia? This, um, this is probably just what I think about it. I don't think it's what everyone else thinks about it, but, um, I think when like the Instagram days first started kicking off and there were, everyone fit their fishing here. Wasn't that like everyone was killing their fish, keeping their fish, like things, things weren't great here. They were actually really bad. And then in those early Instagram days, there was, I guess we worked out, there's a lot of sports fishermen all around the country doing really cool things and, and wanting to do better things. And, and I guess all the, all the people doing that, um, I don't know, I guess they still sort of started raising awareness about that's how it should be. And I guess that's what we did as a company. We, we sort of encouraged more of that and we engaged all those people to come to our events and contribute. And we started focusing on, on making the change. So I think maybe, I think the social media mixed with like the people in the right space doing the right thing. And then all the people, all the grommies like looking up, like the kids and young people looking up to those people thinking, hang on, this is cool. It's not how it used to be. And. I think that change has happened over like the last 12 to 13 years. And now we're, yeah, we're, we're in a different sort of, I don't know, different space than we ever have been. And it's a really good one because everyone is conscious. Everyone's conscious about catch and release, only take what you need. Um, we know how lucky we are here with like all the amazing species and fisheries and things that happen at all different types of times of year. And, I think, yeah, everyone is really conscious about it now. We, we love our sport. We've also had some big scares of, um, like people trying to shut down fishing areas and take away, take away certain areas from us. So that's also a big reason behind why we started our, um, citizen science events back in the day. We figured if, if someone was going to come and take away our fisheries, at least we'd have some ammunition to fight back against them. And, and I guess now we do. I mean, you've created you've created the structure to fight back against them with this film festival and promotion of conservation and everything. It's been incredible to see, you know, since last time I talked to you where it's grown and gone. And so you, as you know, the founder, where does your love for fishing come from and how did that impact you in building up your company? Well, I actually grew up like in, in the middle of the bush, like I was like a proper cowboy. There was, there was, it was an hour drive on a dirt road to the closest town. And then it was another hour drive to the closest town with a shopping center. So we'd only go to town like once a month to like do our grocery shopping. We lived in the bush. Like I'm talking like 
as bushy as it gets on a big cattle property. And, and I just loved fishing from like, from the day I was born. I remember like my earliest memories we were walking to like the cattle trough and there's these things called tugboats in there. They're just like little water beetles. And I'd just be, I'd sit at the cattle trough all day trying to catch these bloody water beetles. And then it quite often there was, there was a couple of creeks there, but they were, they would only run when it rained. And sometimes the fish would actually come into those creeks, these little things called bobbies or spangled perch. And that was just like the best times of my life. when I get to go down there and, and catch these, catch these bobbies. And I guess, yeah, I, I just always wanted to get to water and get to the coast. And I don't really know where it come from. It's just always been in me and, and it still is. And I guess it's in a lot of people. Can't explain yeah. it. I mean, a, I really a lot don't. of us, that, a lot of us that love fishing have that bug. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost a disease, you know, <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. It's, it's, no one else in the family had it, but they could see that I had it. And yeah, they obviously like, yeah, took me fishing. And I remember there was like these inland freshwater crabs in this Creek that we grew up and, um, they're really friggin' rare turns out. And that was like one of the only things I could catch when there, when there was no fish in there. Well, there you go. There you go, man. I mean, going from living in the bush to now you're living on the sunshine coast, right? So tell me about what you've been up to lately. Have you been fishing a lot? What's been going on? What have, what's some of the highlights that you've been experiencing lately? Yeah. I'm not too proud about how this answer is going to come out, but because I guess the early days when we were just running our little, their little community events here, it was all fun. There was just fishing. It was content. It was, it was just the best life ever. But when we actually bit the bullet to, to build this BCF TFI event, it, it took like a lot of work, a lot of infrastructure. We had to beef out the team. We had to do like, a, invest a lot of money, a lot of time. And we've done that over like the last three and a half years. And I feel like I've just been an office bitch the last three and a half years. And it actually hasn't been that enjoyable for me. Like it is on, it is on the event day. And when we get to go to the screenings and have the parties and announcement parties and stuff like that. But as far as like lifestyle and fishing and all that, it's just been non-existent, unfortunately. However, I do feel like where we're at now, we, um, we have spent the last couple of years building everything we've done and the platforms and the procedures and everything like that. And now it's, it's all there. It's all rock solid. Um, like I was telling you, we, we decided not to renew our lease on the office and just work remotely moving forward. And I think as of now, like things are going to be a lot more flexible, a lot more enjoyable. And I'm actually going to Fiji on next Saturday for a week's fishing. So things are changing. Oh, that sounds fun. That's going to be an amazing yeah. trip. <laughs> yeah. I've got seven days, seven days at Namoto Island in Fiji. So I'm pumped for that. What are you targeting while you're there? Well, uh, probably Wahoo. I'm thinking the, um, we actually had some boys in, in there's some boys in this year's, um, top water film invitational that, uh, that fished Fiji at the Moto Island. So there's a Nomoto team and, um, yeah, there's probably the most hectic fishing video there is. There's like world-class Wahoo, just fish galore, like showcasing the beautiful Fiji. And yeah, they're all Aussie boys from Australia, just over there fishing and living the life. So I get to go over there and have a crack for a week and see if I can replicate some of the things they've done in their video. There you go. So the competition itself is not limited to just filming in Australia. You can film anywhere. Yeah. So the first year it was because we come up with the idea in COVID, it was just guys fishing the great barrier reef and they were basically all from Queensland. We knew that there'd be no issues there. The next year it was Aussie teams could fish anywhere in Australia. And then this year it's, Aussie, it's Aussies fishing anywhere in the world because our major sponsor is BCF Australia. We, um, we just need to tie it in with them and, and that's how it works. But yeah, that's, that's what's happening. That's awesome, man. That's it. That's going to be awesome. So when is the competition end? when do you guys pick the winner? Um, so it ends on the 7th of September. So you've got until the 7th of September to go to the film invitational.com, watch the films, vote for your favorites. We're giving away 10 grand cash. This, this month, um, we've got another mega prize giveaway the next month and every month after that. Um, that's only 10 grand Aussie too, by the way, it's probably peanuts for you guys, but it's a lot of money for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's good, and man. It's, I mean, 
Ten grand's ten grand. It's only, yeah, it's four four ninety nine to get on there and watch the films and and go into the draw and stuff like that. So it's like two bucks for you guys. So if there's anyone out there who does want to jump on and see what we're talking about, you yeah, more than welcome to. Absolutely. I mean, I I'm, I tell all my friends about it. You know that there's this whole competition that we don't even know about here in the states that happens in Australia, and it's some of the sickest fishing you know, that you can see and watch some, some of the highest quality content that you could see out there. And it's, it's pretty incredible what you guys are doing. Um, you know, what's the next step for you? I mean, what's, what is the vision, you know, 2025, 2026 and so on. At, at the moment, like we're always thinking about that. We've had some, we've had some crazy ass ideas. Like we, we wanted to do an international one, wanted to do maybe like a American bass one, um, we, we put out a lot of feelers in a few areas and we hit a couple of brick walls and we're just like, you know what, let's just get this one right first. Let's just get to the end of this event and then we'll see where we're at and, and we'll, we'll see what we want to do moving forward. There's, um, there's also the option to where, cause, cause the actual event format is like, is the most amazing thing about it. It's just like, you get these people and you put them in this pressure cooker situation where they've got to make this film because they actually win $70,000 cash. So it's, it's in their best interest to do the best possible job they can. And then, yeah, the, it's up to the audience to pick the winner. So it doesn't matter what space we're doing it in. It could be, we could be doing a four wheel drive one. It could be an extreme sports one. It doesn't matter. So, so the film invitational is, is what the platform's called it. And it could go anywhere, to be honest. It may not just be fishing. I can't wait to see what happens from there. I mean, a film invitational and in different sports and, you know, even in hunting, that could be sick. Something like that, you know, um, that would be so sick. Many... yeah, I, I haven't thought of that hunting at all. We've been, yeah, that, that would be sick. Dude, following someone, you know, doing, I don't know. I don't see a lot of hunting videos in Australia. I, I don't know. I don't even know what you guys hunt over there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, good, good question. Yeah, people. You know, what the internet's like these days. Like people don't like seeing that much of it on YouTube and stuff. But that's definitely something we could look into. Yeah, we're we're hunting. I don't know, mainly wild boars. There's roo shooters. There's um like kangaroo shooters. There's there's deer over here, foxes, rabbits, dingoes, all sorts of stuff. I mean, saying that you came from the bush, did you do any of that while you were growing up? Yeah, absolutely. How's, um, cause like we live so far from town, like no one, there's like, I was like a seven year old kid. I used to like drive down the end of, and we used to have heaps of dogs. We just like go and shoot a roof for our dogs every second day, like as kids. So we were just like seven to 10 year old kids. And that was like our, our job as a kid to go shoot some roofs to feed to the dogs. Probably shouldn't be saying that. I don't even know if it's legal anymore, but yeah, that's what we used to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i mean it's okay you were kids you were doing what you had to do you know yeah it is what it is so did you have those this, did you have those healers is it, that's what they call them since yeah yeah we did we had catalogs yeah yeah one of my buddies has he has a, a blue healer she's gorgeous so i i yeah. love those dogs but she nips at my ankles all the time so it's crazy hey, she thinks i'm a cow yes. <laughs> I don't know why they do that. They've got this th habit where they um they let people into the house yard, pretend they're all friendly, and then when they go to leave, they nip the nip the crap out of them. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. One of, one of the things they do. But yeah, back in the day, like when we when we were kids, um, like yeah, we used to muster the cattle by horses. There was like no like it was really remote. Like it'd take you like weeks to muster all the cattle, and yeah, that's just what we did as kids. It was dusty and it was hot and there was definitely no water and no Great Barrier Reef there. Well, you were a cowboy, brother. And now look at you. Now you're you're an ocean warrior. <laughs> you're out there. <laughs> I don't I don't think I was ever a cowboy to be honest, but I did the job. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's working out right now. I mean, you're now hanging out on the Sunshine Coast. I mean, you're by the water, you're living life, you're fit. Well, you're not fishing as much as you hope you would be, but you're going to be fishing next week in Fiji, which is going to be incredible. I mean, so tell me a little bit about, you know, you said you grew up in the bush, but I know you fished over time. Tell me about some of those experiences, what you've caught, you know, what's some of the most memorable experiences fishing in Australia or abroad for you? 
good question. I think I used to just fish in the impoundments here when I was in school because I just moved to like a place where it was still in the bush, but there was a couple of impoundments nearby, like Boondoomba Dam, Jockey Dam. It's actually the same sort of dams as Carl Jockerson fished when he was kids, but it was before the day of social social media. So we, our parents were dropping us all at these dams and we were just fishing all weekend and getting picked up on a Sunday. And we used to love bass fishing. Um, I think we just love being out on the water and camping and just being away from adults more than anything. But we did love the fishing and we got really good at it. And then I moved down to the sunny coast when I was 19 and I sucked at saltwater fishing. Like it took me over a year to catch my first flathead, which is the easiest fish to catch here. Like I was so bad. I was just like trapped in my ways of bass fishing. And I just started putting in the time. It was before we had good sounders of social media or anything like that. So I just put in the time and the work and yeah, I ended up, um, over here, our, our mangrove jacks, you call them mangrove snapper. They're just like, they're a little bit different over here. They're, they're like the prize sport fish in the estuaries. And I ended up getting pretty, pretty good at catching them. And I had just some of the best sessions of my life, catching them and learning how to catch them and just learning to enjoy the grind, like putting in a couple of days to catch one fish or just to have that, have that chance. So that there was that there was something that I really enjoyed back in the early days, especially like in the early days of social media, because they were so hard to catch and I was catching a lot of them. And um, it's just, it was a good way to network and chat to people and, and have discussions with people. And um, yeah, ended up going fishing with other people and then learning from other people as time went on and had a lot of time catching mang mangrove jack, I guess. And then, yeah, I've had some really, really cool, Really cool Great Barrier Reef trips. Um, one of the best ones I went on. I think I told you last time we we got onto some massive doggies. Did you? Did I end up sending you that video? I can't remember. No, no, I never got it from no. you. No, I'll tag you in it after we get off here. But yeah, it's just like the craziest dog dog tooth tuna fishing you've ever seen. Just like you would have seen you would have seen the video. It's gone viral like a couple of times. So I'll tag you in it after this. All right. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's that's it. There's been heaps heaps of amazing fishing stuff. I think um one thing I didn't realize when I started when well when we started these events, there's been there's been a lot of people help me get get things to where they are. Obviously, all the people who come to the events contribute to the events. Sponsors, my team. I've got like a team of maybe like twelve to fifteen people sort of subbing for us and that's that's how we've that's how we've built everything we have but i guess the the best thing about it all is just all the people i've met along the way like all the people that have come to the events all the people that have come as strangers and now like are my closest friends or they just classify the event as like one of the best things they've ever done um and it's just been it's been yeah it's been the best thing about it it's been better than the fishing to be honest is all the connections and people we've met yeah i mean building a community is remarkable in and of itself for you to be able to you know build the community that you've built but i'm sure the relationships that you've built along the way are just absolutely lifelong and it's it's been incredible for you to you know you've elevated a lot of these people up and you've created this 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 like community and it's been i'm sure it's been awesome along the way i mean so do you do you foresee yourself fishing with these guys you know eventually you know do you get out yourself and create content at all or is it really a lot of people you know sending you stuff in well bef no before tfi we did a lot of our own content stuff we we're um like running our own little series for a thing called fish flicks here we're doing like all our own members only content we've where yeah, we had like it's our sexy boats we're fishing it all the time like i said the, the early days were the best it's when we actually sort of like made the, made the corporate step into TFI and everything that goes into that. It just things changed a lot. So, so that it'll it'll come back. It'll come back. Like I want to get over and see you. I want to I want to come to Miami for friggin' six months. I've been talking about it for six months. So that's actually on the list. Like get me over there, dude. You have a place to stay here anytime. I mean, I got an extra room in my house. We can you can come down here. We'll go <laughs> lobstering. We'll go fishing. <laughs> We'll go to the Bahamas. We'll we'll have some good times down here in Miami. We'll go out a little bit too, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm getting over there in the next twelve months. Like I promise you that it's gonna happen. All right. Well, you got a spot with me, brother. Anytime. I like it. 
like I said, you're welcome to come visit me at the Gold Coast too, if you like, because I'm I'm moving there. I appreciate ASAP. that. Yeah, sunny coast. We can um we can do the tour up up the Great Barrier Reef, like pull in and see like a heap of the crew along the way, like whatever. Like we can do whatever. I'm totally game for that, man. I I want to get get over to Australia really bad at some point. It's just a matter of when, and when I do get over there, it's going to be with you because I know you're gonna you're gonna show me a good time over there. So I can't wait. Sick. I'm thinking the exact same thing about you too. So let's <laughs> let's make it happen. Hundred percent, man. Well. I appreciate, you know, taking the time. I know it's early by you, but I appreciate you sitting down with me. Guys, everybody go check out TFI, SCF. They are awesome. Like he said, it's a few bucks. It's easy. And you're going to see some of the best quality fishing content that you could ever get. Make sure you go check them out. And don't forget, follow, like, and subscribe to Science of Fishing. All right, y'all. We'll see you later. Thanks for joining us on The Science of Fishing. We hope that this episode was helpful and you learned something for the next time you're wetting a line. Before we cast off, a special thanks to our sponsors, Bloody Battery, Sea Mule, and Black Reef Company. Stay hooked by following us on social media at Science of Fishing and hitting the subscribe button. And if you know someone who'd enjoy this, please share it with them. Until we meet again, catch them up.